You're listening to 105.3, The Gerblin, Dominaria's number one music source for generic goblin noise. Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at flipsidegaming.com and originalmagicart.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. As this is the last extra Saturday game, I'm cramming two games into one, so sit back and enjoy. The first game features Matt playing Azuri, keeping Three Forests, Swan Song, Rishkar's Expertise, Wood Elves, and Sylvan Library. Trevor is playing Fraley's, keeping Yavimaya Hollow, A Forest, Vernal Bloom, Ulvenwald Hydra, Natural Order, and Soul Ring. Sean is playing as Nathtek, keeping Prowess of the Fair, Shrieking Affliction, Drag a Warcaller, Demonic Tutor, Blighted Woodland, Swamp, and Elvish Visionary. Lastly, I am playing my Grand Warlord Rada, keeping a Mountain, Soul Ring, Care Keep, Lifecrafter's Bestiary, Kessig Wolfrun, Blasphemous Act, and Magus of the Wheel. Matt wins the die roll and starts us off. Matt plays a Forest and passes. Trevor plays a Forest as well and casts Soul Ring. Sean plays a Swamp and casts Shrieking Affliction. I play a Mountain and I cast my own Soul Ring. Matt plays a forest and casts Sylvan Library. Trevor plays a forest and throws caution to the wind in an elf game by casting Vernal Bloom and passing. Sean plays an unclaimed territory, naming elves. He then casts an elvish visionary and draws and passes. I play a care keep and I cast Lifecrafter's Bestiary to hopefully scry into a forest. Matt uses his library trigger but doesn't keep any extra. He plays a forest and he casts wood elves with one green floating. He grabs a force from his library, and Trevor makes a threatening gesture. Matt is then the first to cast a Priest of Titania, and he passes turn. Trevor plays a forest, and he brings out Fraley's in his main phase. He upticks her to make an elf, and he passes to Sean. Sean plays a Lanoir Oasis as land for turn, also struggling to find a forest like I am. He casts a Delirium Skeins, and we all discard three. With nothing else, Sean then passes. I lose 3 on my upkeep to the Affliction trigger, and scry with the Bestiary, bottoming the card. I play a Tap Flamekin Village, which isn't really helping me. I then drop a Magus of the Wheel to hopefully draw me into some forest later on, and I pass to Matt. Matt also loses 3 on his upkeep to the Affliction, and then uses his Library trigger. He pays 4 more life to keep an extra card, and he plays an Island in his main phase. He then brings out a Zuri, and has a green floating. He then taps the priest for 7 green mana, and taps 2 of his forests to help cast Green Sun Zenith, where X is way too big for this early in the game. He grabs an Avenger of Zendikar, and gets 5 plant tokens. This gives Azuri 5 experience counters, and Matt then moves to combat, putting the plus 1 plus 1 counters onto one of his newly made plants, and passes. Trevor takes 3 from the Affliction Trigger on his upkeep as well, and he casts a Farhaven Elf with 1 floating. He grabs a forest, and puts it into play tapped. He then casts Natural Order to sacrifice the Farhaven Elf, and goes to find Terastodon. He blows up Matt's Library, Island, and Sean's Shrieking Affliction. Trevor then upticks Fraley's, and he passes Sean. Sean draws for turn and casts Demonic Tutor, very tempted to go grab a forest because it'll give him some much needed mana. He grabs a card, and plays a fully blooded Woodlands, and then drops Waste Knot, passing turn. I scry, and I bottom the card, casting a Spawning Pit in my main phase. I then cast Blasphemous Act, and with it on the stack, I activate my Magus, which is probably not the wisest choice I've ever made. Matt discards a creature, and Sean gets a zombie token from Waste Knot. We then all draw 7, and all the creatures die to Blasphemous Act resolving. In my second main phase, I play an Exotic Orchard, and I pass. Matt plays a Forest, and has access to 10 mana. He casts Marwyn the Nurturer in his main phase, and then casts Lanawar Elves, giving Marwyn a plus one plus one counter, and pass to Trevor. Trevor casts Azuri in his main phase, and then Rishkar, putting the plus one plus one counter on Azuri and Rishkar himself. He then drops his own copy of Lanawar Elf, and an unkicked drag of Warcaller. We then see Trevor downtick Fraley's to draw four cards. He plays a Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, and activates it for 8 green mana, using 3 of it to cast Groin Rites of Itlamok. Trevor reveals Heritage Druid, and puts it to his hand, casting it. He then taps 3 elves to float 3 green mana with the Heritage Druid, and uses the 3 remaining floating from Nykthos to cast Soul of Nufrexia. Moving to his end step, Groin Rites flips to reveal Itlamok. 
Sean draws and plays a forest finally. He cracks the blighted woodlands to go and find two more forests and pass to me. I play a ghost quarter as my land for turn and I cast a Torian Mauler. I get to pay one green to draw from the bestiary trigger with the orchard and I attempt to ghost quarter Trevor's Itlamok. Trevor responds by tapping it, using the mana to activate his soul's ability and makes all of his permanents indestructible. Matt plays an island and casts his own Terracidon in his main phase. He blows up Trevor's Nykthos, the Itlamok, and Sean's Waste Knot, and I realize that my Mauler should have a counter on it. Matt then casts his own original copy of Azuri, and he passes to Trevor. Trevor draws, and in what is slowly devolving into a game of Simon Says, casts his own copy of Marwyn. He then upticks Fraley's to make a Druid, which gives Marwyn a plus one plus one counter. I also gain a counter on my Mauler. He decides to hang back though with his board state, and he passes to Sean. Sean plays a Swamp, and casts his own Priest of Titania. He then casts a Null Mage Shepherd, which is a card that I think is pretty neat. We then see a Sangromancer hit the field, and Sean passes, and I give the Mauler more counters. I scry on my upkeep, and I bottom the card. I play a Rootbound Crag, finally finding a green mana source, but it's not a forest. I cast Rata, and I pay one to the best hero to draw as I cast her. Moving to combat, I swing the Mauler and Rata at Trevor. Trevor blocks and takes none, and in my second main phase, I cast Chain Reaction using some of the mana from Rata, but with two Azuris on the board, this doesn't do very much. Trevor taps to regenerate his whole board, as does Matt. Responding to it, Sean tries to blow up the soul of New Phyrexia by tapping four creatures, but Trevor has enough mana to activate the soul and protect it. Matt draws for turn and plays a Reliquary Tower. He casts Azuri, gaining another counter onto Marwyn, and then casts an Umbral Mantle. He equips it onto Marwyn and is now able to generate infinite green mana while Marwyn becomes increasingly larger. He is then able to pump that mana into original Azuri's ability, pumping the rest of his elves, and needs only swing one elf at each of his opponents to finish off the game. Game 2 has us back in Montreal, and Chris is playing as my L deck, keeping Nature's Lore, Command Tower, Sky Shroud Claim, It That Betrays, Homeward Path, Warstorm Surge, and Three Visits. Eric is playing his Wart Raid Mother deck, keeping Llanowar Elves, Gore Clan Rampager, Three Visits, Wheel of Fortune, Eternal Witness, and Two Forests. Jameson is playing his Sliver Overlord, keeping a Canopy Vista, Glacial Fortress, Godless Shrine, Hinterland Harbor, Sulphur Falls, Swamp, and Venom Sliver. My buddy Tim is playing my Zedru deck, keeping Active Authority, Aura of Silence, Idyllic Tutor, Replenish, Steam Vents, Hollowed Fountain, and Sarah Sanctum. Also, I should say, this is a plane chase game, and Chris wins the die roll. We start off in Mount Corellia, which has the guys put a pressure counter onto the planes at the end of their turn. Whenever they planeswalk away, Mount Corellia will deal damage equal to the number of counters to each creature and planeswalker. If they roll Chaos, they'll be able to prevent that damage. For the first turn of the game, Chris plays a command tower and free rolls to walk away. He whiffs and rolls again, whiffing. At the end of his turn, he adds a pressure counter. Tim plays a tap steam vents and fails his roll as well, adding another pressure counter at the end of turn. Eric rolls first and the guys planes walk away. All creatures and planeswalkers, which is none, take two. They walk to Horizon Bows, which has all permanents untapped during each player's untap step. Also, whenever they roll chaos, they can search their library for up to three basic cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle. Eric then plays a forest in his main phase, and he casts Exploration. He then plays a forest and casts Llanowar Elves, which isn't some bad ramping for turn one. Moving to Jameson's turn, everyone untaps their permanents. Jameson then plays a tap Canopy Vista, and he rolls the planar die. He hits the planeswalk side, and they planeswalk to their third plane, which is more luck than some of the Plast Planar Chaos games that I've ever had. They hit Naya, which allows you to play any number of lands on each of your turns. Whenever they roll Chaos, target red, green, or white creature you control gets plus one plus one until the end of turn for each land you control. And suddenly, Jameson's super land heavy opener isn't so bad. He dumps almost his entire hand but one card, and has enough mana on turn one to cast a Sliver Overlord. Chris plays a Homeward Path, and he casts three visits to go and find Taiga. He uses his free roll, and fails, and then pays to do it again. Sadly, he whiffs again, and with no extra lands to play, passes. Tim plays a Hollowed Fountain tapped, and then a Sarah Sanctum. He rolls the die, and fails, and casts Gamble. He goes and finds a card and puts it to hand, and as he only has six cards in hand, rolls a d6 to find out what he'll be discarding. He hits Imprisoned in the Moon, which turns out to be the card he tutored for, and he passes to Eric. Eric casts his own three visits on his turn, and he grabs Stomping Grounds. He then rolls Planar Chaos, and his Llanowar Elves gain plus three plus three until end of turn. 
He taps it for mana to try and planeswalk away though, and failing to do so, passes to Jameson. Jameson plays a command tower, and he casts Venom Sliver in his main phase. He then activates the Overlord, and he goes to find a mirror entity, putting it to hand, and then casting it. Moving to combat, the Sliver Overlord hits Tim for 7 commander damage, and Jameson passes. Chris draws and plays a Windswept Heath, taking one to go and find Plateau. He then casts a Sky Shroud Claim, trying to catch up to what Jameson was able to do on turn 1, and he grabs a Forest and a Savannah. Still not done, he casts Nature's Lore and goes to grab a Temple Garden, taking two to have it come in untapped. Chris then free rolls, whiffing, and paying one mana, fails to hit again. Tim draws and free rolls. He hits Chaos, but that doesn't do much to help him, and he passes. Eric casts Harmonize in his main phase and draws three. He plays a Forest, and he passes. Jameson draws and plays a Buried Ruin. He then activates the Overlord and goes to find a bone-sized sliver, putting it to hand. He then casts it, and moving to combat, puts Tim out of his misery and swings four at Chris. Chris free rolls and whiffs, playing a cliff top retreats. We then see Eternal Witness hit the field, returning Chris's Windswept Heath to his hand, which he plays, and he cracks to go and find a tap Sacred Foundry. Chris then casts Mael, and he passes turn. Eric draws and casts Birds of Paradise. He then casts his own Eternal Witness and returns Harmonize to his hand, and passes. Jameson draws and casts a Striking Sliver in his main phase. He activates the Overlord again, and goes to find a Winged Sliver, casting it. He then activates the Overlord once more, and goes to find a Sliver Legion. Moving to combat, he swings the Overlord at Chris for 14 commander damage, and the rest at Eric for 8. Chris psychs his deck up to hopefully draw Wrath, but his effort is for naught. He tries and rolls, and whiffs, and tries once more, hitting Chaos and pumps his Eternal Witness. Chris then activates Mael, and hits a Tally, putting it onto the field. With nothing else, he passes. Eric plays a Forest, and he casts Harmonize once more to draw three. He then casts a Sylvan Library and passes. Jameson untaps, and he plays a Clifftop Retreat. He then casts a Sliver Legion, and he activates the Overlord to go and find a Heart Sliver, casting it as well. And moving to combat, swings the Overlord at Chris and everything else at Eric to win the game. Game review time. So, I think both of these games spoke for why the winning decks won, Matt was in a very good position from early on, and he was the first to be able to generate a ton of mana and dump it into Azuri. Whereas Jameson kept an incredibly sketchy hand, but was rewarded for it as soon as they planes walked away. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.